Hi, Mike Moody, um, Chief Engine Builder here at Al Moody Racing Engines. Um, just like to tell you a little bit about the research and development that we have been working on with VP. Um, the 602 crate motors. We've made over 50 pulls on one and um, we tore it down just to check the wear, um, analyzed everything, inspected it, and we found that with the VP oil and fuel that there was almost zero wear on engine bearings, cylinder walls, or rings, which is surprising after 50 hard pulls on the dyno. Um, that just goes to show how good the oil really is and not counting the extra horsepower that it makes. Another thing I want to point out that I tried while I was on the dyno that I found. To start with, we didn't use any VP's break-in oil. Throughout this process, I drained it out. I checked the leak down on the motor. The leak down on this motor was right at 11%. Yeah. So I put the break-in oil in. I ended up making three or four pulls with it. From that point, it was leaking 2% at the rings, and it showed. That was the way we first were able to break 400 horsepower with this particular Crate 602 motor. So it told me the importance of this break-in oil and the rings are so fragile on these motors that this was something that me and my racing, I would end up flushing through my motor once a month to keep the rings alive and the horsepower up on these motors. Oh yeah, because it's brutal on these engines out there. The temperatures they run, the environment they run in, and it just goes to show the, fix, the friction modifiers in the VP oil, they really do make a difference. We're looking at these bearings out of the Crate 602 that we just made 50 dyno pulls on. And uh, I can't believe there is almost zero wear on these things. And after 50 hard pulls on this engine, I was expecting to see more wear. But uh, they look great. Um, I am definitely surprised. Um, the VP oil with the friction modifier, I mean, it's definitely doing its job. The rings look really good. Uh, I mean, you can't ask for better than that after 50 pulls. And these crate engines are, are you know, a mass-produced engine. And the tolerances on them are not as close as they would be, you know, say a precision race engine. We've had 20-plus years of testing and research with VP, and we're always happy, you know, when they send us something new to test so we get to see for ourselves the results. And their new oil uh, is just unbelievable. And in these engines, in the environment they run and the temperatures they run, uh, you know, if you're not protecting your engine, it's not going to last but a few races, you know, and then you're going to have to rebuild it. So you want to make that thing last as long as possible. And with this oil, it greatly increases your chances of running it longer and harder than you could before. So we started with this Crate 602 out of the crate, and from crate, with a couple of external modifications, this motor ended up making 427 foot-pounds of torque and 367 horsepower with a conventional 1040 oil in it. From that point, I decided to go ahead and try the break-in oil, and I changed the oil, and I put the break-in oil in, and I actually did a leak down on this motor, and unbelievably it went from 11% to 2% with this oil. Horsepower with 93 octane and this break-in actually brought it up to 450 foot-pounds of torque and 403 horsepower on a non-oxygenated fuel, which was unbelievable to break those numbers on these crate engines. So from that point, I decided it was time to test of their oils and with their oxygenated fuels. So from that peak with their oxygenated fuel of the CHP and their oil, we were able to achieve 466 foot-pounds of torque and 408 horsepower. From those points, I have took the break-in oil out and I actually switched over to their blend of 1040 oil, which produced identical results with a 93 octane of over 400 horsepower and over 450 foot-pounds of torque. And this is the oil that I would be racing on. 